Nigel, thank you so much for joining us. I don't know whether there's, you know, a, a repricing on the stock market because we didn't think about, of course, the balance sheet as much as we thought in terms of a tool for readjusting, or whether there's simply a fact that now the market thinks that the Fed is very, very aggressive in dealing with inflation, almost at the expense of growth. Well, we, we always thought that this year was going to be a challenging year for equity markets. We thought there was going to be more volatility. History shows us that as we go into these periods, you know, where we're moving into a tightening phase, that the market has to adjust. And that, that's indeed what we've been seeing. You know, you then throw into that a, a war in Ukraine and you've got all the recipes there for really quite a significant correction in, in markets. And I think that's what we've, you know, we've really seen over the last couple of months or so, where the markets have been adjusting to that. We had more news overnight from Brainard in terms of the maybe the speed and the, the scope of the tightening. And you know, this is this is a problem for investors globally because we are in yeah. kind of slightly uncharted waters here. We haven't really been at this phase where we're getting to the proper tightening, the removal properly of QE, moving into that QT phase. Yes, we've always had rate cycles in the past, but this is an extra, an extra problem that investors are having to grapple with. So from our perspective, mm -hmm. certainly from an equity markets, we're very much looking for resilience, companies that are resilient to this type of environment. And I think the growing risk as we move towards 2023 and into 24 of a recession, you know, it's something that we talked about at the beginning of the year. The probability of that has risen. And that's what you're starting to see now impacting but, risk assets around the world. OK, so first of all, what kind of recession and what does that mean for capital? I know you think capital is at risk. What does it mean for investment strategy then? So I think what you have to be, you have to really go towards quality. That is companies that have got strong balance sheets, companies that actually have got good business models that can prosper and do well in a more volatile environment. And I think the extra complication in when we talk about recession is, are we talking about a, you know, a GDP, a real GDP recession, or are we talking about a nominal GDP recession? I think the chances of a real GDP recession have significantly increased. But actually, nominal GDP is likely to remain quite positive because this inflationary pressure that we've seen coming through is likely to last for longer. And that means there are going to be some winners as well as losers in the equity market. So you're going to get some real differentiation. Who can actually win in that higher inflation environment, even in the face mm -hmm. of a kind of a, a real GDP recession? And so, which means what? Are you adding to, to quality growth? Is it value stocks or, or are you looking for just cheap things? So look, I think you have to be more diversified than the last few years where it's been very much about growth. I think you want to avoid high rated stocks. You want to avoid those where the value is based on a lot of future growth because that is going to become more uncertain. So companies that can deliver you earnings, cash flow and dividends today and have the ability to grow that. So which sectors are we thinking about here? You know, I think the energy sector looks really interesting. I think the fundamentals have changed there, both in terms of renewables, but also in terms of more traditional energy markets. I think if you look at the industrial sector, historically, you might say not an area you want to go into in terms of a recession. But actually, within that, there are a lot of winners going on there, particularly when you look at the sustainability here within Europe, the move towards reducing energy costs. So companies involved in insulation, companies involved in heat pumps, for example, those type of businesses are actually going to do well in this environment. Yes. Yeah, I mean, on energy, I mean, there's a million questions on, on, first of all, if you invest now, and I know we've gone back to fossil fuels, but by the time there's investment in there, um, of course, a, as a market participant, we could be at the, at the end of the phase of fossil fuels. So there's always a problem of timeline. And of course, when it comes to renewables, we're extremely dependent on some of the raw materials going in Ukraine that are needed, that maybe the market is discounting, that are needed to, to make up for the transition. So how will this all play out? It, you're absolutely right. And these are the complications. It's why you have to be very specific about the stocks that you're actually going to be investing in this environment. You have to understand their supply chains. Yes, there are definitely areas where the supply chain has been disrupted because of Ukraine. Now, markets you know, and businesses will flex and will find new sources. So it's understanding those companies that can win in that environment where there are disruptions to supply chains. Understanding the company's business model is going to be really important going forward. Um, Nigel, when you look at some of the, the, the quality companies, do you worry about the, the next earnings season, that actually there's something uglier happening there? 
I, I do worry about the next earnings season. I think as we look at expectations for consensus earnings this year, it's about 9.5% uh, for global. Uh, it's about 8% here in Europe. Uh, I do think that those numbers are going to come down this year. It's why you need to be look, finding companies that are going to be more resilient, that actually are going to be able to cope with supply chain disruptions, cost price inflation, and being able to you know maintain some growth within there as well. So I suspect that that 9% uh, global GD, uh, global EPS number is probably going to be coming down more into the kind of five region as we get towards the Q4 this year.